I recently made a video called Complete Guide to the Ultralight Slip Float Rig, and I made it because many of you asked me to make a video on that very subject. Well, the video did super well, and it seemed like it was really popular, so I decided that I would follow it up with another video, and this time we're going to be going over the drop shot rig. So, welcome to Complete Guide to the Ultralight Drop Shot Rig. Now, in today's video, I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did in that previous video. I'm going to start out here in the office. I'm going to talk about everything you need to set up an ultralight drop shot rig, and then I'm going to show you how to rig it up, and then we are going to go to the water and we are going to catch fish on this thing. And I'm going to talk to you about how I like to rig it, how I like to fish it, so on and so forth. So by the end of this video, not only will you know what you need, you'll know how to rig it up. And then lastly, you will know how to fish it. So ideally, you will start to catch a lot of fish on this very rig right here. And I can tell you, I catch a ton of fish on the ultralight drop shot rig throughout the year. It's great from cold water all the way to hot water and everything in between. So it's definitely one of those must haves for all ultralight anglers. Without further ado, let's talk about what you need. A drop shot rig, whether you're using it for bass or you're doing an ultralight rig like we're talking about today, is very simple and it consists of three main pieces of gear. First off, you have a hook. Second, you have a weight. And third, you have a soft plastic. Now I'm gonna go ahead and talk about each of these individually, and I'm gonna talk about some of the differences between the options on the market today. So starting off with hooks, there are obviously thousands of hooks on the market. So in order to break it down and talk about the exact hook that you are gonna need, I think we should really take into consideration two main things. First, what type of gear are you using? Well, in this case, we're using ultralight gear. So no matter what, it is really important to use a light wire, small hook. I actually have four is the largest size hook that I have. A lot of times I'm using like a size eight, which is really, really small, but because I'm using ultralight gear and I'm fishing for multi-species, that makes a lot of sense. Ultimately, I don't think there's ever really a case with ultralight fishing that you would need larger than about a size two, um, because I think that those are generally gonna fit the small plastics that we're using, and they are going to um, be light wire enough to match up well with the line and the power of our rods. Um, the next thing that you're gonna wanna think about is what type of plastic do you plan to rig up? If you're using something a little bit larger, you want to use a hook that is going to pair well with that plastic. If you're using something a little bit smaller, you again want to use a hook that's gonna pair well with that plastic. Ultimately, the hook is going to help with the action of your bait if you have it match up properly, but if you're oversizing your hook to your bait, you're going to kill that action. Or if you're using a hook that's actually too small for your bait, you may have a hard time getting a hook in fish. So ultimately the goal is to match it up with the size of plastic you're using, and then obviously match it up with the gear you're using. Um, here's a couple of my favorite options. Um, I would say that this Hayabusa is probably my favorite. Um, these are sometimes hard to find because they run out of stock, but they are a really, really good hook. It's the uh, Hayabusa Finesse Drop Shot Hook, DSR-132. Like I said, I use size eight a lot of times. I've also got some size fours, size sixes would be good. Something in about that range. I have used smaller hooks, but I don't think I need to go a whole lot smaller than a size eight because that'll catch just about any species that I'm looking for. And it is small enough to rig up on pretty darn small soft plastics. I've got several people that have commented in the past and I've actually got several friends that like to use these uh, Aberdeen style hooks. I got some to test out a little bit. I can't say that I've used them a lot, but I have seen friends use these successfully. So if you want a little bit longer shank hook, it could definitely change the action of your bait. But depending on the type of soft plastic you're using, these could be a good option as well. And then the last brand that I have handy right here is the Owner Mosquito Hook. This is actually very, very similar uh, as far as a shape goes to the Hayabusa. I will say I have broken a couple of these in my experience, so I'm not entirely sure what that's all about, but this is still another good option. Now the next part of this rig is the soft plastic. In this case, I've got a horsefly rigged up. This is one of my personal favorites for the ultralight drop shot rig. I just think that a little insect profile does really, really well for multi-species, especially in my neck of the woods here in Michigan. But I'm gonna be honest with you, there's not necessarily one option. There's thousands of options. You can use worm profiles, you can use craw profiles, you can use minnow profiles. Ultimately, it's a matter of preference, it's a matter of confidence, it's a matter of the forage in your area and the type of fish in your area. For me, I don't think I can go wrong with like little insect profiles because I have a lot of panfish and there's a lot of vegetation. And I feel that an insect profile 
you know, hovering above the weed beds and whatnot, it makes a lot of sense and it tends to do well for me. I would encourage you to experiment a little bit, but generally speaking, something in that one to three inch range is a pretty good option for the ultralight setup. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about weights. There are different shapes and sizes available. I would say in my experience with ultralight fishing, a 1 8 ounce weight has been basically what I use 99% of the time. I would say that 16th ounce all the way up to 3 16 ounce is probably a pretty good range. I don't think that you're going to have to go a whole lot heavier more often than not, um, but it really depends on the depth of the water you're fishing. The one thing to remember is when you're using this really thin low diameter line, you don't have to use as much weight to get it down to the bottom. The other thing is if you're using a tiny little plastic, it doesn't have a lot of drag. You know, when you're thinking about bass fishing applications, you're using a higher diameter line and you're using larger baits. And so what happens is you need to use a larger weight in order to get that down to the bottom. But with ultralight, it takes less weight to get it to the bottom and to maintain that bottom contact. So like I said, the 1 8 ounce weight works really well for me. I feel like I can fish a wide variety of depths all the way from shallow water to relatively deep water and that's what I typically buy. Again, very, very much depends on the type of water you fish, but I did want to talk a little bit about the different shapes available. You know, growing up in Kansas and fishing a lot of rocky bodies of water, I used to use this circle type weight, just like the round ball, um, and that was always my preference when it came to bass fishing. Um, and I would say the same principle would apply for ultralight fishing. Nowadays, I almost always use this cylinder style weight. Um, it just seems to work a little bit better in the vegetation. It does not get bogged down in vegetation as bad. It seems to come through a little bit better. So that is what I use and that is what I recommend for that type of situation. There's also like these little teardrop style weights. I actually haven't really used these a whole lot, but I think this would be a good option for kind of just an all around use. Um, I picked these up because I have a feeling I might start using these quite a bit as well. I don't think there's a huge, huge difference, especially with ultralight because you're using lower weights and that's lower resistance. They're smaller. They're going to be able to come through stuff pretty well. Um, but just know that there's options out there. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on gear, so let's go ahead and move on. If you want to see some of my favorite options, I will link them in the description below. Um, I should talk about rod and reel real quick and then we're gonna go ahead and rig up a drop shot. I have used a micro drop shot rig on a wide variety of rods and reels, and so I must say, you don't need to go out there and buy a rod specifically for this. You can use it on just about any ultralight setup. That being said, I do have a little bit of a preference. Um, just like the ultralight slip float rig, I like to use a longer rod. This is the seven foot six Phoenix Elixir. And there are two main things that I kind of look for when it comes to a drop shot rig. Number one, I like that longer length because it allows you to move more line. The drop shot rig is obviously a bottom oriented technique. You're using that weight and you can cast it quite a ways. And because you a lot of times have a lot of line out there, that longer rod allows you to move more line. The other thing is because you're using that single hook um, and a lot of times you do have a lot of line out there, I like a fast action rod. That fast action is going to allow me to bury the hook and keep those fish pinned. Um, something too noodly, I feel like I'm not able to really feel my bait as well, and then I don't feel like I'm able to bury the hook as well. So a longer, fast action rod is what I prefer. Again, I have caught fish on this on just about every rod I've owned, so you don't have to go buy a new one. All right, let's show you how to rig one of these up and then the moment we've all been waiting for, especially myself, we will get out there and catch fish on the body of water. Let's go. This is the gear that I'm actually gonna rig up on my ultralight drop shot, but this is a size eight hook. And because it's a really small hook with a tiny line tie, this 30 pound braid doesn't fit through it. And for demonstration purposes, this line is much easier to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the knot on a little bit larger hook solely for demonstration purposes. Now, just about all of you have probably seen this knot before. This is called a polymer knot. It is one of the most common knots in the world. So it's not necessarily anything too crazy. All you do is you take your line and then you double it back and go through that line tie again. You form a loop. Let's try not to get that all tangled up. There we go. Okay, we've got a loop and we've got our tag end going back towards our main line. Then all you gotta do is you take those two and you tie an overhand knot. Here's my hook right here. I'm gonna go ahead and tie this overhand knot, grab that loop, pull it through. Once you have that loop pulled through, you actually run that loop back around the hook. So here you go. We've got a loop, pulled it through, and then we tighten it down. Now, if you wanna see the polymer knot online, just YouTube that next. It's super easy. This 30 pound braid's getting a little bit stiff on me, but anyway, so 
Now this actually is a key demonstration point. In this case, the funny thing is the hook's actually upside down and that happens sometimes, but it's very, very easy to fix. So I tied that knot my hook is unfortunately facing the wrong way. Sometimes it faces the right way, other times it doesn't, but it's an easy fix. All you have to do is you have to take that tag line and you then go back up through your line tie again. If I could get it through that thing. Is that through it? There we go. And you just pull on it and let's see what happens. And there you go. So now when I did that, it is now facing the proper direction. Now, in this case, that hook is a little bit funky and I think that's just because it's this 30 pound braid, but you want it to stand straight up and down like that. And that way it's gonna have a nice natural look to it. So at that point, the next thing is you would then take your drop shot weight. And I think one of the big call outs here, because I do have a big call out, when you're using really, really light line, I do not recommend simply clamping it down. You see that this has like basically a little clamp to it. You know, with bass fishing, you can just take your line and run it through there and then just snip it up on that. You know, but, but with ultralight fishing, I actually recommend just tying a simple like overhand knot. And the reason is, is because that line is significantly weaker. And so it's important to just secure it a little bit better. Otherwise you are going to lose a ton of weights, which you obviously don't want to do because weights get very expensive, especially if you're using tungsten. And if you're using lead, you don't want to be putting a bunch of lead in the water. So I recommend tying it. And again, it just has to be a, a simple knot, just like an overhand like that. And it'll just secure it a little bit better. So there you have it. Again, I'm not going to use this. This is just demonstration, but I've got 30 pound braid there. I've got that drop shot hook and then about seven, eight inches below it. I've got that weight. I will say when it comes to ultralight, this is about the length of a leader that I like. I don't go super, super long with ultralight line. For some reason, this has always been kind of my go-to. It seems to work really well. I'm going to go ahead and rig up the actual one and then let's go to the water. There's a fish. It feels pretty good. I switched colors. I was using Dakota Sunrise, but I switched to white and immediately got this big chunky perch. Look at that. That is a beauty. It's exactly what I was hoping to find. First cast with that white horsefly. Look how fat that fish is. It's like a little football. See ya, buddy. So here we are with the drop shot. Like I said, I just switched colors to the white horsefly. I wanted that white because this water is actually pretty dirty and we've got some good sun and I feel like that white's gonna really pop down there. And I'm fishing probably about seven to 10 foot of water. I'm currently sitting in 13, but I feel like where the fish are, I think they're right around 10 foot. Now, as far as actually working a drop shot goes, you know, you're gonna notice that I'm fishing this thing really slow. The water is definitely cold right now. You can see that there's literally snow on the ground. We got snow yesterday. Um, it's relatively nice today. It's about 35 degrees and less than 10 mile an hour wind, which is nice. I will say the drop shot for ultralight is a good technique for uh, windy conditions because of the fact that you have that little bit heavier weight. It allows you to kind of control your bait better than a lot of uh, techniques in the wind on ultralight. So I do like using ultralight drop shot when we have a little bit of wind or a little bit of chop on the water. One thing I did want to point out is there's technically numerous ways you can hook your plastic on your hook. I'm becoming more and more of a fan of literally running my hook through the body of my plastic. I feel like smaller fish with smaller mouths, I feel like it allows them to kind of take that bait down a little bit better and get hooked. That being said, I do a lot of nose hooking as well. I like to nose hook it and leave the uh, hook buried in the plastic, especially if I'm fishing around a lot of weeds or, you know, brush. It just keeps it a little bit more weedless. But in this case, I'm mostly just fishing open water, so I figured I might as well have that hook sticking right out of the back. So the main reason I came to this spot is because last year I caught some perch here about this time of year. So I wanted to see if I could replicate that bite. Now, I think what I'm finding is there's perch here, 
but I think there's two things. I think there's less perch here this time around than last time, and it's probably just a timing thing. And the other thing is I think the water's definitely dirtier, which I think is making it harder to get my bait to stand out in front of them. I don't know exactly where they're set up. I caught the one, and I feel like there's some fish in this general area, but I feel like what's really important is that I'm dragging this thing right in front of their nose. And uh, the water's cold, the air's cold, the water's dirty, not ideal. So it's just important that I fish really slowly and methodically. And so I will say when it comes to drop shot fishing, sometimes that's what it takes. It's not always the most exciting, most aggressive bites in the world. Sometimes you really have to slow down and really pick apart an area. And that's what I'm gonna try to do today. I am confident I'm around fish. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use this long rod. I'm gonna make long casts. I'm gonna fan cast the area. And I'm really gonna just try to focus on picking this place apart. And I trust that that's gonna pay off for me. Before I left my house, I guess I was thinking that it felt a lot warmer than it actually is, and I totally forgot my gloves. So I am definitely freezing right now. My, my hands are freezing. I'm still happy I'm out here fishing, but I really wish I would have packed gloves because that was a big, big mistake. The fact that there was one big fat perch here, there has to be numerous. Um, I'm sure that fish, there he is. That fish is in a group. There's another one. Yeah, I think they're uh, getting ready to spawn. I think these are big fat pregnant females is my guess and uh, this must be kind of a staging area for them in the spring is kind of what I'm thinking thank goodness another one and look how fat that fish is I'm telling you these fish are absolutely gorgeous that one was like right below my kayak oh go ahead yeah he was a little stunned well I turned off my camera for a second and of course I caught my smallest fish yet so hey it's another fish I'm not going to complain but that is not the size we're looking for now the reason I really wanted to try the drop shot here specifically is because like I said I'm fishing anywhere from about 7 to 13 foot of water right now I'm sitting in 11 and these fish are bottom oriented you know yellow perch is a great species to target with a little micro drop shot you know you can catch so many different species on a micro drop shot I've caught bluegill I've caught lots of bass yeah, heck I've caught pike on this thing but you can catch just about any species on it that's going to be a semi bottom oriented species but yellow perch they're just they're very bottom oriented you know they're they're kind of designed to be traveling along the bottom of the water column and so I've found that a micro drop shot is a great great way to catch them and so given the conditions given the area I felt like I would be crazy not to try it we've got cold water We've got a nice high sun, we've got yellow perch, and they're sitting in relatively deep water. I could definitely be catching these fish on like a jig, but I feel like the drop shot's advantageous because I'm able to cover a little bit more water because I can cast at a country mile. And on top of that, with the fact that we've got some chop on the water, some wind, I feel like I'm able to have a little bit more control over the bait and really be able to feel the bottom just a little bit better. Sometimes after catching a few fish, I get a little excited. All of a sudden I'm doing this. I'm working my bait too fast. Really gotta stay disciplined and just keep that thing really slow moving in these colder water you know sometimes when you're fishing in the spring or in the summer you know maybe the fish want a little bit faster retrieve maybe they're willing to react oh man he hammered it maybe they're willing to react to some quicker movements but in this case that fish bit when I just kind of had it still and I'll tell you what I think that's my best one yet pretty similar to the first one that is an absolutely fat perch these are what we're after my friends look at that fish that feels good that feels really good to catch that fish right there. And I'm, I'm gonna say, thank you drop shot. Thank you drop shot. I tell you what folks, this fish right here is exactly why I love the micro drop shot. It's not necessarily a giant, giant fish, but it's super fat and uh, I loved catching it. See you buddy, going straight back down. That fish swam at a 90 degree angle straight to the bottom. That tells you, you want a bottom oriented technique. Drop shot, my friends, drop shot. In addition to that white color, the other thing that might be helping is the fact that I have been putting a lot of this scent on there. This Pro Cure Crappie Panfish Magic is my go-to. Um, that stuff works pretty good, and I feel like a bottle lasts you a long time, so um, it's definitely a good product, and it works really well with the mule stuff. I feel like you can put it on there, and it really sticks to it really well. My buddy Ramon put me on that stuff, and I love it. And I just put some fresh scent on there, and I immediately caught a fish, so my guess is but that's definitely uh, impacting things. That's a little bit smaller fish, but a fish is a fish, my friends, and I think we're up to like five or six perch, five probably, I don't remember, but a decent little number. There you go, buddy, back to it. Yeah, I think it's that time of the year. Fortunately, I threw him back in the water before anything major happened.
my hands are really cold and they can only take so much so I am going to call it a trip I'm just doing a little bit of adventuring right now but I'm gonna head back to my car here momentarily and then I'm gonna go home and I'll tell you what I hope you enjoyed watching today's video as much as I enjoyed making today's video I've really liked making these like technique specific videos so if you ever want to see more or if there's any specific techniques especially ultralight techniques that you're curious about make sure to drop a comment below and let me know really these video ideas 90 percent of the time are because of comments and and people's ideas that are bringing them to the channel and it definitely means a lot to me when you guys are giving me suggestions because sometimes my brain doesn't function fully and i need your help anyways i appreciate you watching today i hope you have a great day and we're back in the kayak my friends so you know what more fish are coming very soon we'll catch you next time